Hey guys, so the husband has the kids for the night because I have to run a couple errands and I thought that maybe while I'm out, I might hit up a thrift store and do some thrifting. So I thought I'd take you guys with me and kind of show you my process when I go thrifting for books and one of my favorite stores and see if I can find anything fun tonight. So let's get going. First stop is a McDonald's so that I can get myself a Coke because there's nothing better in life than McDonald's Coke. That might be a slight exaggeration. Um, but also, while I'm out, I'm going to be listening to my audiobook. Right now I'm listening to Pillars of the Earth. Um, it's a read-along that Claudia from Spinster's Library, uh, Library and Andrea from Infinite Text are hosting during the months of June and July. And so I'm in the middle, I think we're on week three of reading that and so I'm gonna be listening to that while I'm out running errands and so let's get this show on the road. <laughs>
so I just got done in there. Um, hopefully you were able to see in some of that footage some of the things that I get to kind of peruse through when I'm looking for books um, and some of the things that you might find at your local thrift store if you decide to go thrifting. So I ended up spending 37, just under $38 and I got 23 books. So you could see on the signs that the children's books, middle grade books included, are all a standard like $1.79 or something like that. And then um, the books are always buy four, get one free at this thrift store. And today they were running 25% off of everything. So I think that's a pretty good deal because I got some pretty good books. I got some hardbacks, some paperbacks, some that are in brand new condition, some that aren't, but that's okay. Because it all kind of evens itself out. I will do a full haul um, when I get home, probably tomorrow. So, see you in a few. Okay, so it's the next day. I've unloaded all of the books that I got. And so I thought I would go through all of these and show you kind of in detail what I have here. Uh, like I said last night, I did end up, I got 23 books. I spent just under $38 and I'm pretty happy with that. I think I found some really good ones. So I'll just dig right in and show you what I have here. Uh, here are the first two books that I got. They are board books for my son. He will be two in September, but I picked up The Napping House by um, Audrey Wood and Don Wood. And also we're going on a bear hunt by Michael Rosen and Helen Oxenberry. Oh, you can't see that. There we go. Uh, so, and these are both just in really, really pristine condition. I like looking for books for my kids when I go to thrift stores. They tend to have a fairly good selection depending on the day. The one big tip I have that I have started practicing is to only buy children's books if they are in really good condition. So these two books are in brand new condition. You can barely even tell that they've been used. So I decided to go ahead and pick these two up and they ended up being like a buck a piece. So uh, that's pretty good considering if you buy them from like Amazon and things like that, you're paying at least six to $8 for board books. So those are the two that I got for my son. And then I picked up some middle grade. Some of these I got more for my kids, some I got more for me. Um, but the first one that I grabbed is A Dork Diaries book. This is Tales from a Not So Glam TV Star. I have a daughter, my nine year old really likes the Dork Diaries series. And this one, it's number seven in the series, but it's a hardback and it's in really, really good shape. So I decided to pick this one up for her. So I got that. And then I also grabbed Wayside School is Falling Down and Wayside School Gets a Little Stranger. I have um, Wayside Stories, Sideways Stories from Wayside School, the first one in this kind of series by Louis Sicar or Louis Sicar. I ended up, I think I got it from a Scholastic Book Fair book order, I think, for a dollar. And so I went ahead and grabbed these two because I'm currently reading some of those stories to my kids and they're just funny, kind of short story-ish. Uh, it's like 30 chapters and each chapter is about a different kid in the class and I thought that my kids would really like these so I went ahead and grabbed them because they are in really really good shape I can I'll just peel these little stickers off it looks like somebody was probably having a yard sale or something and had them priced uh, but I'll hand those off to my kids and then I also went ahead and grabbed a couple of these uh, this is What Was Ellis Island, and I got Who Was Jane Goodall. This is a book series, the What Is, Who Was, um, there's some other, uh, ones about events. There's ones about places like Ellis Island and the Eiffel Tower. There's ones about people. Uh, so I went ahead and grabbed these two. There were a couple other ones there that I didn't grab, and now I'm kind of wishing maybe I would have, but these are chapter books. And they are just really good nonfiction exploration for middle grade, uh, especially like the early middle grade, like second and third grade, which is the grades that my kids are in. So we have currently who was Dr. Seuss and who was Marie Curie um, for the kids. And so I went ahead and grabbed these because I thought that my kids would really like uh, to learn more about Jane Goodall. They're both really interested in animals and 
I have a huge fascination with Ellis Island, so I would like for them to read about Ellis Island. So I grabbed that one. So those are for them as well. I also grabbed The Chocolate Touch by Patrick Skeen Catling. That's a guess. Um, and I'm not, I believe this is just, a, it's a very short story, but I think it's just about a kid who ends up kind of like King Midas where everything he touches turns to chocolate, maybe, but I'm not exactly sure. It's just really short. It sounded like it'd be something that would be a good read aloud even for my kids when they have a shorter attention span. Uh, so I grabbed that one. And then the rest of these, I'm looking through these, are more for me. So, and obviously I will share them with my children. That's why I get them. But I get them because I want them and then I will share them with them. So I found this copy of Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry. This is a Newbery medal winner. This is one that I remember reading in probably sixth or seventh grade. It is historical fiction. It is set during World War II. Uh, but this is like a brand new copy of it. And so I grabbed this because I would love to own it and it was really cheap. So grab that one. I also, I think I showed you last night, grabbed The Wednesday Wars by Gary D. Schmidt. This is one that Katie at Life Between Words talks about every March for middle grade March about how much she loves it. And this is a Newbery Honor book. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what this is really about. All I know is that she raves about it every March, and I know it's one of her favorite middle grade books. So I thought that I would grab this and hang on to it maybe for next March. So I got that one. Uh, one that was talked about a lot this year during middle grade March was Out of the Dust by Karen Hesse. And this was also a Newbery medal winner. A lot of people were reading this one this year for middle grade March because it was ri it's written in verse. And that was one of the challenges this year. But this is a story set during the Dust Bowl, I think. Maybe out west a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. But I know everybody that read it absolutely loved it. So... And once again, this is a brand new almost copy of it. So I wanted to go ahead and grab that one. Okay, next I have The Mysterious Benedict Society uh, by Trenton Lee Stewart. This is a kind of thick one for a kid's book. Um, I'm not 100% sure completely what this is about. And this is the first in a series. So I thought that this would be fun. Um, this kind of sounds like something I would like. And once again, it's in perfect condition. So grab that. I also grabbed a copy of Harriet the Spy. This is one that I've been wanting to own, but I don't own yet. And so this, uh, I just figured I would pick up. I've been thinking about reading this out loud to my kids. Uh, so I'm excited to finally have a copy of this one once again like brand new condition uh, So yeah There's that one and then my last middle grade one that I found is Sparrow Road by Sheila O'Connor Sheila O'Connor is the author of until tomorrow. Mr. Marsworth, which we all know that I'm obsessed with at this point so this is one of her other novels and I'm really I've been wanting to read it and I was actually getting ready to leave the store and kind of glanced down and just happened to see this and I'm like yep I'll take that thank you very much uh so nab that one real quick um I'm not a hundred percent what this one's about all I know is that I loved this author's other work so I want to give this one a try as well so those are all of my middle grade and children's books that I bought moving on to adult stuff now so the first one that I have here is uh, Day After Night by Anita Diamant. Um, in my recent uh, non-World War II historical fiction recommendations, I mentioned The Red Tent by Anita Diamant, and I have not read anything else by her. Uh, Boston Girl is on my TBR, but I had never heard of this one before, and I saw it, and it is brand new. So I went ahead and picked it up. It says that it is about young women who escaped to Israel from Nazi Europe and it's set in 1945 so and it's like four different women who have four different backgrounds on how they got there so I'm not really sure 
what to expect going into it but like I said it's one of those where I really like this author's other work so I figured I would give it a shot so grab that one one that has been on my TBR for a while that I really do want to read is The Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. I read The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I didn't love it as much as most people love it. I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. It wasn't my all-time favorite book ever. It didn't make me sob, but I did enjoy it. And The Winter Garden is about two sisters who do not have a very good relationship with their mother. And when their dad becomes ill, like his deathbed wish to his wife is that she tells their daughters her story. And her story involves being sent to labor camps in Leningrad. Um, and so it's kind of the Russian aspect of World War II. Uh, I read Between Shades of Grey two years ago, I want to say. That's by Ruta Sepetis. And that featured the work camps in Siberia. And that was kind of my first foray into that side of World War II, which I'm totally humiliated to say at this point in my life that that was the first I had really dug into that. But ever since then, I've been super interested in that topic. And so when I found out that that's what this book was about, I really, really wanted to read this. And I'm really excited that I found this one there. Uh, this is one that I can't find on audio through my library apps. And so I know that I need to read it in print. So I'm glad that I have this one now. So got that. Uh, the next one I have here is The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. I read Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty and really enjoyed it. I read um, What Alice Forgot and really, really enjoyed that one. I read that one last year. So I figured I would give this one a shot. This one, it sounds like uh Cecilia Fitzpatrick her, her she's like a really successful businesswoman and her husband wrote a letter that was only to be opened after his death that contained his deepest darkest secret and she found it while he was still alive and kind of the fallout from that and so uh yeah so that's what this is about and I love this cover too I think it's beautiful uh but yeah so grab that one I'm excited to read that and then this next one super excited about. This is Night by Eli Viso, I think is how you pronounce his name. This is a memoir by this man who is a Holocaust survivor and it is very, very well known. It's very short. I am super excited to have this in my possession and to read this. I think this is going to go on my list of books that I would like to get to by the end of this year. Uh, so yeah, really excited to have that. I also went ahead and picked up Where'd You Go Bernadette. Uh, this is one that just recently got made into a movie. I have heard good things about this. I've heard mixed things about this. The one thing that I have heard about this quite a bit is that it's very sarcastic, which I love because that's my personality as well. And I wanted to pick this up for a while just because of that aspect of it alone. So I'm really glad that I found this one. And once again, I think the cover's just fun. Uh, but yeah, so that. I also have The Lake House by Kate Morton. Kate Morton is an author that I've heard quite a bit about, but I've never read. And so I'm really glad to have this so that I can kind of dive a little bit into her work. This sounds really intriguing to me. It says on a summer, summer evening in 1933, this couple's throwing a huge party and in the middle of the fireworks, their son goes missing, their infant from his crib, just disappears into thin air. So they sell the house and move off and nobody can figure out whatever happened to this guy. And then 70 years later, a um, author of best-selling mystery novels is contacted by a young detective who is kind of looking into the case again and so they start digging into it again so I figured this sounded really interesting I'd like to maybe give this one a try so there's that one then I picked up All the Light We Cannot See um, by Anthony Doerr and this is one that is on my project list where I'm reading the five books that have been on my TBR the longest so I did not have a copy of this and I found a hard copy there. So I went ahead and picked this up. This is a World War II historical fiction set in France. It's dual perspective. I'm not really sure about many of the other details on it other than everybody who reads it loves it. 
but I wanted to go ahead and nab this so that I own it now. Um, and hopefully I like it. Crossing my fingers on that. So I have that one. I also finally own a copy of Before We Were Yours, which I'm so excited because I love this book so much. This was one of my favorite books of last year. This is by Lisa Wingate. It follows the story of the um, Tennessee Children's Home Society and what was her name? The Georgia Tan uh, ran the Children's Home Society in Tennessee and she basically was like stealing kids and selling them to the elite in town and nobody knew about it and it was horrific but it is dual timeline so it's told from a little girl in the past in 1939 and then also from someone modern day who's kind of figuring things out a little bit but it is beautiful love it have been wanting to own it now i do it is in really really great shape except for on the front right here it says outstanding book someone wrote in pen and i don't even care because it is an outstanding book and I love this book and I'm so, so happy that I finally own a copy of it. So I grabbed that. And then the last book that I have here is America's First Daughter by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy, maybe? Um, but this is a historical fiction that follows Patsy Jefferson, who was the daughter of Thomas Jefferson. And so this is one that one of my subscribers recommended to me on my non-World War II historical fiction video. So I'm really excited that I own this one now and that I can go ahead and give this one a read sometime really soon. So those are all of the books that I picked up last night. I hope you enjoyed being able to go into the store with me and see kind of the books that I peruse through when I'm trying to find my thrift books, I really, that's one of my favorite things to do is to just be able to go and peruse through the books and find some gems. So I'm excited that I got to take you with me this time. Uh, if you've read any of these, please comment down below and let me know your thoughts and opinions on them. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I hope that you enjoy this. I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya.